Hi everybody, I'm Barani Downs and today I'm speaking for Art Collector Magazine Pool Focus Series with artist Maria Fernanda Cardoso. Welcome. Hi Brioni. Hi. <laughs> uh, today I'm on Mwinana country in Hobart and Maria Fernanda, where are you today? I am in Sydney. Lovely. Uh, Maria Fernanda, you were born in Colombia but have lived in Australia since 1997 in Sydney uh, and your interests lie in the crossovers between science, culture and technology and throughout your practice you've maintained a fascination with nature and the vast array of materials that it produces. Uh, through the mediums of sculpture, installation and performance, some of your past works have repurposed the amazing materials of emu feathers sheepskins and plants, and they've been made into deeply textural sculptural pieces that speak of the natural environment they come from. Your most recent work consists of materials drawn from the Australian bush environment, and this is especially evident in the piece that we're speaking about today, uh, which is 594 Eucalyptus Kings Millie Medium Square, where the humble gum nut is a predominant form. So in the way that you use these natural materials to create the physical structure and overall aesthetic of this work, the idea of worlds within worlds often comes to mind when I look at your work. With 594, what was the reasoning behind using the gum nut uh, rather than say the flowers uh, from this species of eucalyptus? Well, thank you very much for the lovely introduction. <laughs> it's okay. This series, Using Gum Nuts, started with a residency um, 10 years ago with the Jumpy Weavers, uh, where we went camping in West Australia. And um, the idea was for me to travel with them. We were, you know, sleeping in swags, um, giving the, you know, the camp. They took me to a sacred emu site because they knew I was working with emu feathers. And that was the reason they invited me. Um, and the idea was that I will go and observe and then make something out of that. And that exhibition was called Kuru Alala. And it toured for, for three or four years to regional galleries in Australia. And it was incredibly successful. So what I was looking for was a material that would be indigenous to my experience in the desert. Mm -hmm. and um, I found these gigantic gum nuts. I couldn't believe them. How I had never seen gum nuts that big. I was always used to the, you know, little ones of my yeah. childhood because we have eucalyptus in Colombia yeah. and in Mexico and everywhere in the world. You mm -hmm. have um, a lot of eucalyptus, but they were always tiny. And um, I found this tree with these gum nuts this big, and then I started to collect them all and all. So I got, you know, buckets and I started to collect and I almost got lost in the desert after going, oh my God. collecting every single gum nut that I got. And I, then I got scolded for going on. <laughs> out of my so that's where it started. And I was really fascinated with the, the anatomy um, of the gum nuts. Yeah. You know how they have these beautiful star patterns and some of them have five, some of them have four. Um, here is some that have four. Um, and in the same tree, I will find sometimes, you know, six stars or even seven. And mm -hmm. I once found one of them was eight. So I was always, I had been always fascinated by the geometry of nature, what I call biogeometry. Mm -hmm. so as an artist is to observe and then to make others see what I see. So basically this, this uh, series is an exhibition of the magnificent shapes of the gum nuts. Mm -hmm. And the way I work is I just um, pin them on the wall and I keep them a certain order because they have, a, they have their own geometry, but I impose my own, which is uh, a little bit of a fluid grid and uh, it starts to create these wavy patterns and it becomes like an optical play between the white of the wall and the gum nut, uh, mm -hmm. which have, for me, they are like drawings on the wall. Yeah. So basically that's in a nutshell. Yeah. <laughs> about. 
Yeah. Lovely, lovely. Um, so when you when you create your works, there's often really extensive periods of research that go go with it. Uh, what kind of research did you undertake apart from going to the desert, as you just said, uh, for 594? And what were some of the things that you discovered in the process? Um, well, I have been very intrigued by Australian flora uh, um, because it's very tough. Um, so I didn't know that eucalyptus and all of them, they have the leaves going like that. So mm -hmm. the sun and the sun doesn't hit them like that because it's too, too harsh. So like that, so that's why they have that gray coloration. And it intrigued me why do you need a wood, a wood enough to protect the seed. Mm -hmm. um, so that's a question is still unanswered. People, you know, scientists will say it's just because uh, they need fire to, you know, to release the seeds, but that, that's not true. They just release the least the seeds. Um, I didn't do much research at first. I just made my first piece and I resumed this project last year mm -hmm. uh, on the occasion of my show with Sullivan and Strong. And what I found out that there is hundreds and hundreds of uh, different eucalyptus species and they are all described according to the shape of the gum nut. Right. The buds. Now I'll show you some buds. Um, the buds is when they, um, the, the flowers had not opened. And yes. there's these beautiful illustrations um, that actually one of my followers in Instagram sent me the link for this magnificent book on uh, illustrations of all the varieties. So basically, they are taxonomical tools to identify mm -hmm. species. And that has a lot to do with my previous work with microscopy, because um, shape is what tells us apart. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that's why the botany um, has this system of classification of plants according to their sexual characters. Yeah. So flowers, the pistils and the stems are counted and described, and that's what can tell the species apart. And in the case in the case of the eucalyptus, is the gum nut and the buds. Mm -hmm. So that's that's uh, what I had learned. So basically, that reproduction is the most creative thing, and I think that's why they have all of this variety of shapes, and they are excessive. Reproduction is always excessive; it's flamboyant. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to be so big or hard <laughs> or colorful if you're a flower. But um, maybe we do. Maybe that's what it takes to pass on to the next generation. Yeah, yeah. So in terms of the, the overall structure of the work, uh, how do you decide where to place the gum nuts when you're working on the wall? I play around. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So it's serendipitous. <laughs> and I test and then I look and I try different... different um, patterns. So if I can show you, mm -hmm. it's simple. Yeah. Simple. simple patterns. Right. Too big. That's for me that's enough to show growth. Yeah. Yeah. And what I like about life is that uh, life makes itself. Yeah. So to me, that's an artwork. Yeah, it's a absolutely. Sculpture. It's a beautiful sculpture. It's made by the tree. Yeah. It's one of the largest ones I have ever seen. Yeah, it's huge. Yeah. They are only um, in West Australia and Northern Territory and South Australia, none in the Eastern Seaboard. Wow. Oh. The Eastern Seaboard are pine. They're equally beautiful, but they're pine. Mm -hmm. Then I make a pattern like this. Yeah. So I sort them by color and by size and by shape so there's always this is more variations so i go through hundreds and hundreds to only choose a few the few that make it to do these smaller pieces because they are um they have to be perfect um and a lot of them are imperfect because life is tough out there yes yeah so and these are all different varieties. For example, this is a... Oh, wow. So I made a triangle. And yeah. you can see this one has a stem that is protrudes more from the wall and 
I chose to have a little yellow ring. So I choose them by, you know, characteristics. And I, you know, start to play around and look. Um, these ones in the back, uh, they're my favorites because they are a little bit like flying saucers. So they have these perfect shapes, but they are flat. Yeah. Um, so this is a, a species that I had never seen before. Mm -hmm. So, um, so those ones are all kind of flat. So I, I made this wall just with this variety. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, so that's that's the process. I can show you the boxes and boxes of gobnots, but <laughs> <laughs> I imagine there's a lot. <laughs> I don't think I'll ever look at a gum nut the same way again. <laughs> They're so beautiful. Yeah, they are. They deserve to be admired. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, that's my intention. I want people to be entranced. Maybe I should show you other varieties. Let me show you. I have always what's in my studio. Okay. Um, this is this is my workspace. These ones. Wow. They are very rare. They're from WA. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Yeah. Coco, Eucalyptus coronata. And uh, in these ones, I'm using the little groupings. So these ones have four uh, or three. This one has three. Beautiful. So wow. Then these ones have two. Um, and yeah. they're more reddish because they are younger and they have this beautiful gray as they age. So this one, it's actually an endangered species. And these ones, for example, they have this very mathematical. Wow. That's completely uh, different from the other ones. Wow. Yeah. So each of them have that little pattern of five or four, but then they're a group of seven. But as they develop, they lose the flower, and some of them only have three or four. So they start to create these mathematical shapes, yeah, patterns. So I, yeah. So and I have some a little bit bigger here. You can see. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's um, where I'm testing. These ones are kind of my testing walls. Mm -hmm. And here I'm here. I'm, testing i'm selecting the beautiful gray ones i don't know if you can see um i love the yep. gray ones. i only have a few so i see once i sort them out i find the ones that i love then i have to do something with this one small yeah. piece and i have here sorting by size lots of sorting yeah and here i'm doing from bigger to smaller um yeah yeah, and these ones are little baby ones. Mini ones. Oh my gosh, wow. Um, <laughs> There's so much variety. I had no idea. I really yeah, didn't. Yeah. yeah. Life is the most wonderful thing in the world, and diversity is what makes it uh, fascinating. So we, we work with stereotypes. We think eucalyptus as one thing. Yeah. And then it would look the same. And if we know one eucalyptus, we know them all. But that's not true. Yeah. Um, so many different so variations. My, my job is, it's very humble, is just to, to show others these magnificent creatures. Mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and the art they make. I think the gobnuts are the artworks. Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, well, we might actually leave it there, Maria Fernanda. Uh, that was incredible. Thank you so, so much for showing us around your studio and talking about the wonderful gum nut uh, and how you use it in your work. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. Hope okay. to see you again sometime. Right. <laughs> Thank Bye. you.